Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, now a tropical storm. Ida still churning through parts of Louisiana and Mississippi, cutting power to at least one million people. Plus another attack near the Kabul airport as evacuations continue ahead of tomorrow's deadline. As predicted, we had a few showers and storms around this weekend, but was another warm one. What does the uh, what do the last few days of August hold and the first week of September? We'll talk to Mike coming up. Good morning, everybody. Hope you had an awesome weekend. It is Monday. It is August 30th. Good morning. Happy Monday. Uh, yeah, I, I saw the showers, so that was nice, you know, to wrap up August with, I think. If you weren't underneath one, they were kind of easy to see those yes. big, huge clouds kind yes. of here or there. The cloud cover helped out, too. I saw them Saturday. What about you? Uh, yeah, Saturday, Saturday where it seemed well. to be a little bit more numerous. But Mike, let's loop Friday. him into the conversation. Friday, Friday, Saturday, uh -huh. did I, did, uh, not yesterday though. But I'll tell you one thing: if you were under one of those downpours, Friday afternoon, I uh, had to run about ten feet to my car. I might as well have jumped in a pool. It was coming down that hard and heavy about uh, exactly. what three o'clock in the afternoon over there around uh, 410 Bandera area. Yes, sir. So, yeah, and we can expect more of those potentially heavy downpours if you get some of these uh, showers and thunderstorms to pop up later on today. There's nothing right now. Roads are dry. Nothing is showing up on radar as of right now. We've got temperatures in the uh, call it mid and upper 70s. So we are on the above normal side, 74 normal low temperature. The normal high right now is 94 degrees and we're going to be right around there and the, the trend for the whole week is going to be at or even above normal. Uh, humidity is yeah, it's there. Uh, it's not ridiculously high, but just enough. And speaking of high, yeah, mold is very, very high from all that rain that we've had the past couple of days and throughout the rest of today should be fairly dry this morning, about 75 degrees, partly maybe mostly cloudy skies at times. And then we will have a couple of more of those scattered showers and thunderstorms around later on today. 94 degrees, kind of interesting. Wind is out of the northeast. Temporarily, we've got a little disturbances that are going to be sliding down here on that uh, somewhat northerly airflow in the atmosphere, which is what's keeping some of those storms around today. And then rain chances pretty much other than a stray one go out of the picture and temperatures are going to start to creep up as we usher in September. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. We continue to track the latest on now tropical storm Ida. The major storm blasted ashore this weekend as one of the most powerful storms ever to hit the U.S., knocking out power to all of New Orleans. The storm has blown off buildings and at one point reversed the flow of the Mississippi River. Now it is moving into one of the nation's most important industrial corridors. The hurricane is also blamed for at least one death. The storm has since weakened to a tropical storm in response to the damage caused by the storm. Many are already ready to help out, including Houston's Jim McInville, also known as Mattress Mac. The gallery furniture store owner is preparing to send 30 trucks loaded with release supplies to that region. Right now you're looking live at Kabul International Airport, where overnight multiple rockets were fired. At least some were intercepted by the U.S. military as they raced to evacuate Americans and uh, Afghan allies out of Afghanistan. 13 American service members were brought back to the U.S. Sunday after they were killed at the airport, trying to ensure safe passage for those attempting to leave. ABC's Andrea Fujii has more from New York. With the deadline to withdraw troops from Afghanistan less than 24 hours away, the State Department, as of Sunday, says 250 U.S. citizens are still in the country. This is the most dangerous time in an already extraordinarily dangerous mission these last couple of days. And so we will do everything possible to keep, uh, to keep people safe, but the risk is very high. Most of the military members remaining in Afghanistan are racing to evacuate Americans and Afghan allies from the airport in Kabul, hoping to escape the Taliban. Their mission turning deadly last Thursday when 13 U.S. service men and women were killed in a suicide bombing, along with dozens of Afghans. In retaliation, the U.S. carried out a drone strike against an ISIS-K planner and facilitator, and an unmanned U.S. drone targeted a vehicle less than five miles from the airport. The vehicle, believed to be carrying a substantial amount of explosive material, which caused powerful subsequent explosions. And overnight, as many as five rockets were fired at the airport. Officials saying the U.S. anti-missile system intercepted at least some of them, and so far there doesn't appear to be any casualties. 
In the meantime, a solemn scene in Delaware Sunday. U.S. servicemen carrying out the dignified transfer of the 13 service members killed last week. Off to the side, President Biden, the First Lady, and high-ranking cabinet officials. All of those killed were children or even infants in 2001 at the start of the war, including 20-year-old Marine Lance Corporal Riley McCollum. Marine Lance Corporal David Espinoza, Army Staff Sergeant Ryan Noss, Marine Corporal Hunter Lopez, and 23-year-old Marine Sergeant Nicole G. President Biden has now directed the Homeland Security Department to take the lead in resettling those refugees who've been evacuated out of Afghanistan. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. Back here in our area this morning, police are asking the community for its help in finding a man wanted for assault and robbery at a Northside dollar store earlier this month. Sarah Costa joins us in the studio with what police know about the wanted suspect. Hey, good morning, Sarah. Morning. Good morning, guys. Yeah, at this point, they still have little information about the man involved in the robbery, but they do have surveillance photos. And in these photos, the man is not covering his face. Just take a look on your screen. Do you know this man? or recognize him in these surveillance photos. This man with a shaved head, white t-shirt and jeans is seen carrying items inside a Northside family dollar store from two weeks ago, Monday, August 16th, just after 8 p.m. The store is located in the 5,000 block of Blanco Road. Police say this unknown male suspect allegedly stole items from the family dollar. Then when confronted by one of the store's employees, he assaulted them. A police report says the man then ran out of the store and since has not been found. This is where the public can help out. If you know this man who you see on your screen and his whereabouts, you are urged to call Crime Stoppers. That tip line number also on your screen, 210-224-STOP. Now, you may remain anonymous. If your information leads to an arrest, you may be eligible to earn up to $5,000 in cash. Mark and Stephanie. Also making headlines this morning, to Tropical Depression Nora dropping heavy rainfall along the Gulf of California after weakening from a hurricane that set off floods and landslides along Mexico's Pacific coast. At least one person is dead, seven are still missing. The storm made brief land passes near the Mazatlan Resort and then moved back over open water and entered the narrow gulf. Forecasters say moisture from the storm could still bring heavy rains by midweek to the southwest U.S. and central Rockies. Israel's defense minister has held talks with the Palestinian president in the first high-level meeting between the two sides in years. The talks took place in the Israeli-occupied West Bank. Sunday's meeting between the two leaders signaled a possible shift after the near-complete breakdown in communication in recent years. Both countries have new leaders in place. President Joe Biden and Prime Minister Naftali Bennett met in Washington last week. Monday morning, 437, about 77 degrees. And coming up next, Cowboys and Texans both in action this weekend. We're going to check out some preseason highlights. As we head into week one of NFL action, Thursday night, Cowboys taking on the Super Bowl champs, Tom Brady and the Bucks. Outside with live cam, glad you're with us to start off the work week. We have much more to come as we just get started here on GMSA. Football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Neither Dallas nor Jacksonville had won a preseason game this month. Cowboys resting their stars against the Jags yesterday. The game Jacksonville's Trevor Lawrence completed 11 of 12 passes for 139 yards and two scores in three possessions against those Dallas backups. That led the Jaguars to a victory over the Cowboys 34-14 in their preseason finale. Cowboys needed the final preseason game to decide whether Cooper Rush, Garrett Gilbert, or perhaps somebody outside the organization will back up Dak Prescott. Gilbert bounced back from a rough start to lead an 80-yard drive capped by his 19-yard scoring toss to Aaron Parker. Rush was 4 of 8 for 16 yards and three scoreless possessions, while Gilbert finished 9 of 16 for 87 yards with the score. Uh, it was very important. Um, I think that was my first time getting scored on, so now I know what it feels like. Uh, so uh, it's definitely important just being able to go out there and make the mistakes early. Uh, and just now I just got to learn from it and erase it from my game. I mean, at this point, I mean, uh, we'll just see where, where it takes us. Uh, if I'm in the building on Thursday, then I made the team. If I, if I didn't, then uh, just got to move on. 
Houston Texans wrapped up their preseason with their only loss to the defending Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Houston on Saturday night. Seven-time Super Bowl champ Tom Brady started off slow with a three-and-out first series, but after that he roared, leading the Bucs to two long scoring drive. Deshaun Watson was a no-show for the game, not even on the sidelines. It was actually the Texans defense that would score their first points when Demarcus Walker sacked backup quarterback Blaine Gabbert in the end zone for a safety. Texans defense also grabbed three turnovers, two fumble recoveries, and an interception to give them 10 takeaways this preseason compared to nine in all of the last regular season. But the offense gave it away more than they should in the 2013, rather 23-16 loss. All right, so for week one, here is the NFL schedule. It's Cowboys at the Bucks this Thursday night, September 9th at 720. Jaguars over at Houston taking on the Texans. That was Sunday. It's coming up Sunday, September 12th at noon so here we go that's exciting but a tough first game for the cowboys yes definitely <laughs> definitely time now 443 about 77 degrees former theranos ceo preparing to go on trial for fraud we have a preview And welcome back. It's 446. Former Theranos CEO Elizabeth Holmes is now revealing she was abused as she prepares to go on trial for fraud. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, Elizabeth Holmes facing justice. We will change our lives and our world. Holmes, once a rising star of Silicon Valley with her Steve Jobs inspired wardrobe and the false promise that her company Theranos would revolutionize healthcare, heading to court this week. She stands accused of multi million dollar fraud. The Department of Justice alleging Elizabeth misled patients, doctors, and investors. No one from Theranos ever called me to apologize. That's the least you can do when you mess up so badly. Not okay. Holmes, who recently gave birth to her first child just a month ago, continues to maintain her innocence. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll preview Elizabeth Holmes' legal strategy. Why she's saying that she's a victim. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Mike is back now, and he was hinting at some big downpours we had over the weekend. Some were yeah. kind of close to my house, 281-1604 area. Over there, again, Friday afternoon, uh, 410 Bandera. I mean, it was just coming down in buckets over there. So, But then on Friday, the airport had, what, I think three hundredths of an inch? Rain. So it was just if you got this rain, it was rolled heavy yes, at case in point. Uh, this is over there center point, uh, you know, four inches of rain, the gauge. And that was just a couple of days ago. But uh, yeah, a lot of folks picked up some some decent downpours the past few days. We'll have a few of them out there again today. Primarily, uh, if you got to kind of divide up the area, off to the west would be a better chance of seeing some rain later on today. Things are dry right now at least on the ground. The humidity, of course, is there. And uh, we had a few little leftover showers around, and these may be a couple of sprinkles. Everything is sort of uh, dying off uh, out there to the west of us, but there is some uh, the disturbances uh, around the area, like I said, especially off to the west. And we do have somewhat of a northerly airflow in the atmosphere, and so we'll get these little dis these waves coming in here, and that's what's going to be touching off the showers and thunderstorms today. Putting about a 30% chance here in town, slightly better shot at some rain out to the west. And then tomorrow, we'll also have a couple of showers around. I don't think a really great chance at rain. And then, other than a stray sea breeze shower going into the rest of the week, pretty much nil uh, for all intents and purposes as far as rain is concerned. Temperatures are also going to be on going up. Okay, we are on the backside, obviously, of what is now Tropical Storm Ida, but we're getting a lot of moisture being pumped in here from that system down there, right uh, kind of at the mouth of the uh, Baja of California, and that is an feeding moisture into our area, and then that's kind of feeding into some of those uh, little disturbances coming in here from the north and west. Here's the latest on Ida, and it is down to a tropical storm. Uh, 150 mile per hour sustained winds when it did make landfall on Saturday, and it's just going to continue up, and it's going to be a heavy rain producer. So if you have any uh, travel plans in through the mid-south Tennessee Valley, Ohio Valley, and then even up to the northeast, this is forecast to be a big rain producer throughout the, uh, the rest of the week and even uh, heading up into the New England state. So, yeah, it's definitely going to be leaving its mark. As far as our 
our forecast today. We have got uh, kind of a mixture of sunshine and clouds throughout the day. A couple of storms may start to pop up even by noon, 88 degrees and then a high temperature today. We're going to make it up to 94. That's the normal high, the average high temperature. A couple of scattered storms. I think the best opportunity to see any rain is further off to the west. And again, it's going to be where some folks get a nice hefty downpour. Other folks aren't going to get anything tomorrow. A shower or two still mid 90s. Temperatures are going to start their upward climb. We are going to be definitely on the the warm side. Like I said, a shower or two, even if it's not mentioned there along the the sea breeze, that'll be about it. I think a, one or two uh, thunderstorms over the weekend, but still it's going to be pretty hot mm -hmm. with September starting on Wednesday and it's going to be starting above normal and but, autumn is September 22nd. Official. Yes, I'm right. I always get confused with the 21st, 22nd right around yeah. here, but it's still about three weeks away. But the unofficial end of uh, summer is Sunday oh. coming up. So That's right. Labor Day weekend is mm -hmm. upon us and then the leaves change like that. Right. And you know what Sunday is too? what the anniversary of the hottest temperature ever recorded in San Antonio. Uh -oh. OK, we don't want to talk about that. Yeah, part. Well, we, we, we're starting hot, so hopefully yeah. we'll be no, OK. No 111s. No, no, no. 111s. Mm -mm -mm. Agreed. 450 about 77 degrees. And a former boy band member turns into a TV show host. Plus, Hollywood is remembering Ed Asner. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, seven, four, four, Fireball five. Your daily four numbers, six, one, nine, nine, Fireball zero. Cash five, six, 13, 21, 29, 32. Lotto, Texas, one, nine, 25, 30, 39, 41. And your Powerball numbers, 12, 22, 26, 46, 59. Powerball 26, Power Play 2. Good luck. Four fifty four. another sequel is at the top of the box office. This one involving a popular 90s horror film. Plus, a former pop star is tearing up the hearts of a popular TV show. Here's ABC's Christopher Watson. And the legend is, if we say his name five times while looking in the mirror, we can summon him. Summon the Candyman. It's a $22 million debut for the Candyman. The Jordan Peele written and produced R-rated remake of the 1992 original tops the box office with just over $22 million, actually. Candyman. Seven million more than expected, and only a few million shy of what it cost to produce. And I live in paradise. That knocks Free Guy into second after two weeks on top, but it's still doing fine. 79 million domestically so far, and 179 million globally. Lance Bass is this week's Bachelor in Paradise host. The self-proclaimed franchise superfan says he was worried to go behind the scenes and maybe have the illusion spoiled, but... It is amazing how real this can get in such a short amount of time, especially when you're there just focused on finding love and no outside world. Uh, it's the craziest speed dating on earth. You know what? You got spunk. <laughs> well, I hate spunk. Ed Asner has died. He was best known for his Emmy winning roles on the Mary Tyler Moore show and its spinoff Lou Grant. Asner was 91. And pop star B.B. Rexa's 32 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. And time now is 4.55 and it's about 77 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA this morning, tracking Ida. We'll get an update on the massive storm that's turned deadly and knocked out power to hundreds of thousands of people. Plus, the iPhone 13 will have a helpful new feature if you find yourself in an area with little to no cell phone service. That's coming up in Tech Bytes. And checking the roads with TransGuide right now. If you're just now waking up, we'll get, a, get an idea how things are looking out there on the freeways of San Antonio. We will check in with Stephen Cavazos. He joins us right here on GMSA. We'll be back. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hurricane Ida devastates the Gulf Coast. I'm TJ Parker in New Orleans. I'll have the latest coming up.
Outside with live cam, the stars have been out overnight. Not a bad morning here in South Texas. Good morning to you. It is Monday. It is August 30th. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you had a great weekend. Hope you saw some rain. I think a lot of people did. Yeah, it was definitely here or there, but it was out there. Those tropical downpours. Some folks got quite a bit of rain. Here's Mike with an update on how our Monday is looking, although it's still pretty darn early, Mike. <laughs> yeah, it's looking dark right now, but uh, it's looking about the same as what we had the past couple of days where it is going to be warm and humid and we will have some of those scattered showers and thunderstorms popping up later on today. 76 degrees right now, so we're just a couple of notches above the normal average low temperature, and we're going to make it up into the uh, mid and upper 90s later on today. Excuse me, low to mid 90s, beg your pardon, and which is about uh, a normal uh, high temperature. The aquifer, nice, nice big jump over the weekend. A lot of that rain fell in the recharge zone, went up 1.1 feet on yesterday's reading, and the allergens, because of all the moisture, hanging around here. Mold is very, very high and it's probably going to be on the, the higher side, but it should be dropping down later on in the week. Okay, here's the latest on what is now tropical storm. Didn't change the banner up there. What was hurricane, but now just barely down to tropical storm um, Ida 60 mile per hour winds and it's going to continue to weaken as far as wind strength being over land and it, it will also continue to work its way up to the north going into the mid south Tennessee, Ohio valleys and then up to the northeast over the next couple of days and uh, obviously it had no effect on our weather and really, uh, you know, as I was talking about last week, how it was going to help to keep us on the dry side, but there's another system which is kind of keeping some moisture around here. I'll explain more about that coming up, but warm and humid this morning and then a couple of scattered storms later on today, just like what we've had over the weekend and the rest of the week. Plenty of sunshine. It is going to be on the hot side, mid and leaning toward the upper 90s. A stray showers possible, but I really wouldn't count on that. Then going into the weekend, and there may be a couple of uh, storms around here, but to start off the month of September, compared to what average temperature is, it is definitely going to be on the warm side. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Anything going on on this Monday morning? You know, it started a little bit busy, Mike. Good morning, everybody. I-10 at Pro Band 37 at Pecan Valley. Show's pretty quiet here from these shots at Transcut, as you can see right now. Uh, it doesn't look very busy at this hour, but there have been a few things that have been popping up here on the map. So we're going to go ahead and take you to 1604 eastbound, right at Judson Road. Uh, this just cleared from the system here. There was a rollover that was reported out there. Uh, it doesn't look like it caused any delays and it looks like it, it possibly has already cleared out there. So either which way, use caution driving through 1604 there at eastbound. There was a rollover reported there. Also a stall right now here off 281 northbound right at Bassey Road. Not causing any delays at this hour. Still very early as you just saw from the shots at Transguide. Just a few folks out on the road with us this morning. So just use some caution out there. Uh, and if you're going to be traveling to San Antonio from the downtown to the downtown San Antonio area that is. Let's go ahead and check out these inbound times. 25 minutes coming in from I-10 and Bernie. 21, 26 minutes from Bolverde. And if you are coming in from New Braunfels, we're looking at a 26 minute commute time on 35. One last look at Transguide 281 at Sprucewood. I-10 at Frio. We're getting the morning started with just a few vehicles out there, but stay with us. We have construction to be on the lookout for and gas prices coming up later this morning. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. A live look now at New Orleans, Louisiana, a city that's been hit very hard by Ida. New Orleans lost power last night and a flash flood emergency was declared. It's tough to see a lot right now, but we'll get a better look at some of the damage when the sun comes up later this morning. And this morning, Ida has officially weakened to a tropical storm, but the flood threat is a major concern. ABC's TJ Parker has the latest. Overnight, the brunt of Ida's fury slamming the Louisiana coastline. Emergency officials getting calls from people who did not evacuate the barrier island of Grand Isle saying water in their home is up to their chest. In nearby Lafitte, authorities warning that a levee is failing. People have had and sustained damage to their homes. We have a, a senior center of independent living, um, but they had about a third of their roof um, get damaged. They were taking in water. Earlier, a barge that got loose slammed to a bridge that leads to Lafitte, making it nearly impossible for rescuers to reach people. I'm told the vessel has sunk. So those folks, if that's that is the case, and I've seen pictures, um, they're going to have to use a ferry for a couple of months. 
The largest health system in Louisiana, Oshner Health, has been forced to evacuate 66 patients from two hospitals. In Houma, Louisiana, southwest of New Orleans, the powerful winds tearing the roof off this building. The storm surge and winds so powerful they temporarily reversed the flow of the Mississippi River near New Orleans. The U.S. Geological Survey calling it extremely uncommon. Overnight, more than one million power customers in Louisiana and Mississippi were without electricity. Cameras capturing the moment all of New Orleans went dark. Ida roaring ashore 16 years to the day after Hurricane Katrina. The storm, now a major test for the city's hurricane protection system, which was not in place when the levees failed during Katrina. Will it be tested? Yes, uh, but it was built for this moment. In nearby St. Bernard Parish, the parish president warns that recovery will take months, not weeks. T.J. Parker, ABC News in New Orleans, Louisiana. And back here at home, police are searching for a man who allegedly stole from a Northside dollar store and then assaulted one of the store's employees earlier this month. Sarah Costa joins us live here in studio with what police know about the incident. Now police have photos of that suspect, Sarah. Yeah, that's right. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Police have not been able to identify the wanted suspect, but now they have photos from the store surveillance cameras. Just take a look on your screen. See if you know or recognize this man. This man on your screen captured in these photos and not covering his face. He has a shaved head and is wearing a white T-shirt and jeans. In these photos, he is carrying items inside a north side family dollar store from two weeks ago, Monday, August 16th, just after 8 p.m. The store is located in the 5000 block of Blanco Road. Police say this unknown male suspect allegedly stole items from the family dollar and then when confronted by one of the store's employees he allegedly assaulted them a police report says the man ran out of the store and has since not been found this is where the public can help out if you know who this man is and his whereabouts you are urged to call crime stoppers that number on your screen right now 210-224-STOP you may remain anonymous if your information leads to arrest. You may also be eligible to earn up to $5,000 in cash. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Over in Luling, a train track and roadway are finally back open after a tractor trailer and a train crashed yesterday afternoon. That crash happened around 2.30 yesterday near the intersection of Highway 90 and US 183. Officials say a truck carrying a wind turbine was trying to turn onto the highway while a train was approaching. The truck then overturned. Police say there was also some damage to the locomotive and the railroad crossing. Thankfully, no injuries were reported. Emergency crews were able to get everything cleared just before 10 last Last night. This morning it's 506, about 77 degrees. And still ahead, details on a new feature on Apple's newest iPhone that makes it easier to connect people in low reception areas. And next we're looking at why many people say the foster care system in Texas is broken. Taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting off humid, but not too bad. Expect the heat today. We're going to be checking in with Mike soon. Ten minutes past the hour. Welcome back. Our latest episode of KSAT Explains takes a look at what many people say is the broken foster care system in Texas. Hundreds of displaced children have fallen through the cracks, but there are local organizations working to make sure some of those children have a safety net as they age out of the system. RJ Marcus introduces us to a local woman who connected with one of these organizations and has a new outlook on life. Within six months, I was moved four times. For the first time in her life, Robin Parker feels a sense of stability. The first time her family was at the center of a child protective services case, she was just three years old, but she wasn't removed from her family and put into a foster care home until she was a teenager. I was very angry as a teenager, um, and sometimes I took it out on my foster parents. Sometimes I took it out on the, the foster girls that I was roomed with. But many other times, Robin felt like she had to hide her emotions and feelings out of fear of not knowing where she would go next. It was hard because I also had to contain myself. Because if I showed too much emotion or I got too difficult, they could put notice on me and they could send me away. And that was something I didn't want to do. I didn't want to move anymore. While Robin was in the system, her parents were incarcerated and she wasn't close to any other family members. Like many other foster children, every day in the system for Robin felt like a struggle for survival and to find a sense of normalcy. You want to be normal and you can't be normal. And so then you look for ways to rebel and you look for ways to figure out how to process that. We're experiencing a lot of emotions in a very small time at an age where 
we're not emotionally mature. Robin met Elaine Hartle when she was 17 years old and connected with the Through Project, a nonprofit that supports San Antonio and surrounding area foster youth as they age out of the system. It turned out to be a life-changing experience. Elaine asked Robin to mentor foster teens in a similar situation. Robin finished high school, graduated from college, and started working for the Through Project. I didn't quite see myself reaching this point in my life. I, I thought it was going to end in a more negative note. So I'm just, one, I'm grateful to have the opportunities that I have. Robin is now 26 years old, and she's on the move again, this time moving out of state for a new opportunity on her own free will and with her entire future ahead of her. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. You can hear more from Robin and others by watching KSAT Explains the Broken Foster Care System. That's available to stream right now on demand at KSAT.com slash explains. Glad you're with us this morning. Let's get your Monday going. 512, about 77 degrees. And still ahead, Kanye West finally drops his latest album. We're going to have a preview. And yeah, next, why the demand for smartwatches has surged by 47% in the past few months. Truthfully, it's frustrating to see how fast dust reappears. But dusting with a cloth is a pain. And dealing with a bulky vacuum is such a hassle. Ugh. Ugh. So now we use our Swiffer Sweeper and dusters. The fluffy fibers, they pick up dust easily, wrapping it in all those hard to reach places. Gotcha. And for our floors, Sweeper's textured cloths lock all kinds of dirt, dust, and pet hair. Unlike my vacuum, it sneaks under and around places. Look at that. Dust free and hassle free. Stop cleaning, start Swiffering. Really? They're goldfish. I always go for the handful. I got about 73 here. I keep more than 73. Go for the handful. Do lotion and jeans go together? A Nivea breathable experiment. Now they do. Moisturizes deeply with no sticky feel. The game-changing Nivea breathable. Good morning and welcome back. 516 Apple's iPhone 13 will reportedly allow calls and texts in areas with poor cellular service. ABC's Rachel Scott has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, new details on the next iPhone. The iPhone 13 will reportedly feature satellite connectivity, allowing users to make calls or send texts in areas without cell phone coverage. That's according to a well-regarded Apple analyst. The new iPhone is expected next month. And smartwatch shipments are continuing to soar. They jumped nearly 50% this spring compared to last year. More than 18 million of the devices were shipped in the spring, the hottest sales period since 2018. And finally, Kanye West is new album is streaming after repeated delays the album titled Donda in honor of the rapper's late mother is now on Spotify Apple Music and Tidal it has 27 tracks and features collabs with Jay-Z The Weeknd and others there's no album cover art just a black square those are your tech bites have a great day it's now 517 Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. It looked pretty quiet out there last time I looked. Yeah, good start to the Monday morning and a new week as we see these few vehicles out on the roads with us right now. We're getting a few things uh, started here. Let's get our clicker going. It's having a Monday as well. I 10 at Pro Band shows just a few folks out there right now. Again, getting their morning started early. Uh, nothing big to talk about. So let's go ahead and bring you to the map and show you that we did have a little bit of a busy start uh, crash that was reported off 1604 has since cleared. Uh, still have that stalled vehicle out at 281 North northbound right at Bassey Road, but it doesn't appear that we're seeing any delays at this hour. So things to be on the lookout for in the coming days tonight. Actually, we have some overnight construction that's going to lead to a lane closure for signage installation. Now this will lead to that alternating northbound main lane closure at loop 1604 to Stone Oak Parkway and TPC Parkway. It's going to be going on later tonight. Should be wrapping up from fr uh, Friday, September 3rd from 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. So again, mark your calendars for that construction starting later tonight. And if one of the places you need to stop by before grabbing that cup of coffee is the gas station. Of course, we have those AAA gas prices here. They're reporting around the Bear County 260 for an average gas price and around the state. We are looking at 278 and the country. The average gas price is 315. Now, AAA does also report that the Lone Star State is one of 10 states that saw a large decrease by four cents and around the country. That's a two cent decrease as well. Some some 
possible good news there. And one last look at 35 at Maine. Just a few more folks out there right now. We're watching the roads closely, but as always, keep your eyes on the road as well. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. That reminds me, I need to get gas, but I've seen gas. Uh, some of the signs on some gas stations about 250. Yeah, it depends. 51, it depends. Here's what I'm worried that. about. They said that Ida had halted yeah. production uh -oh. in the Gulf, yep. like 95% yeah. of the production in the Gulf, and they were anticipating a possible price spike coming up here in the coming weeks. We yeah. will see. We'll keep an eye on that. See. Yeah. yeah. But but then you think, okay, it was for what three days, and I know mm -hmm. that's a long time, but it's mm -hmm. gone out of that area now, but then they need to get power back and all that. So yes. well that and Still, you can't I, just turn these facilities off. It's yeah. kind of a, a process, I guess, to bring them back online. It's not flicking a switch or something right. like that. No. <laughs> Wishful thinking on our part. Anyway, uh, this is an interesting picture and you know, looked outside, thought there was a, a tornado funnel cloud out there. And these are, are what you see when we get these, you know, tropical downpours, clouds move in and you get these intense rain shafts. And that's what that is as opposed to, you know, where the rain is just covering the whole area. And now this is not a, a weather pattern that's conducive, obviously, to tornadoes, but it is pretty uh, eh, kind of ominous looking, like I said. And also, if you're underneath that rain shaft, boy, you're going to be getting quite the downpour with those and that's going to be a possibility again today. So it's pretty tranquil out there right now. Nothing going on. We had a few leftover showers late yesterday out in portions of the hill country. This is where most of the energy is right now and kind of the little disturbances. Also, we are getting some moisture coming in here from uh, Nora, which is down there on the west coast of Mexico. And some of that's being kind of pushed into our area because if that was not in existence right now, Ida off to the east of us, we would be on the dry side of that and very, very sinking air. But we do have the influence of that. And so that's why we still have a couple of showers in the forecast today as well as tomorrow. Here's the latest look at Ida. And one thing also to take note, and you can see the very distinct as it makes landfall, the very distinct eye of that storm, and then it sort of falls apart as it gets over land and loses its energy source. But also, as we always talk about how there's the center of it, and this is definitely not symmetrical as far as the rain. The heaviest rain is on the east side of it, where, or the right-hand side, I should say, in relation to the direction of travel, where there's more lift in the atmosphere, and this is kind of the sinking uh, side of that storm. But it was one of the most powerful storms to uh, make land in Louisiana, about 150 mile per hour winds when it did make landfall. Yes, Katrina was actually in size wise a bigger storm. This was more compact uh, and obviously a bigger punch just being a smaller compact storm like that. All right, today, long range computer model this is that broad brush model. It does have a couple of those showers out there again, primarily off to the west. A few maybe tomorrow. I mean, one or two of them. That'll be about it. Yeah, there could be another shower trying to pop up Wednesday, perhaps Thursday. Uh, the odds of rain once we go into the latter portion of the week are not that great. And they're then going in toward the weekend. I think we see a couple of uh, showers, thunderstorms trying to pop up around here, but not really a great chance at all of any rain after today. 20% at best once we head into the next uh, five or six days. 88 degrees today at noon. A couple of storms may try and pop up already by noon, especially out to the west and northwest. High temperature today up to 94. That's the normal average high temperature. And again, a few of those scattered showers and thunderstorms. A lot of folks, most folks won't see rain. If you do, could have a decent downpour. A shower or two is possible the next uh, two, three days. You know, one or two of them out there. A couple more over the weekend, but overall the trend is going to be for more sunshine as we finish out August and start September, especially in hot temperatures, about two, three, four degrees above normal. Yes, but still not the triple stuff. Right. <laughs> we are going to finish <laughs> August without the triple. Okay. So, Thank okay. you, Mike. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Right now, 522, about 77 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, remembering Ed Asner, who has died at the age of 91, and amputee actor John W. Lawson lands a big film role. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, seven, four, four, Fireball five. Your daily four number, six, one, nine, nine, Fireball zero. Catch five, six, 13, 21, 29, 32. Lotto, Texas, one, nine, 25, 30, 39, 41. And your Powerball numbers, 12, 22, 26, 46, 59, Powerball 26, Power Play 2. Good luck. Hollywood has lost a much-loved actor known for his work on and off screen. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. 
the show must go on. Ed Asner has died. The Emmy and Golden Globe winning actor was best known for the TV series The Mary Tyler Moore Show and Lou Grant, the miniseries Rich Man, Poor Man and Roots, and such movies as Elf and Up. He was also an outspoken activist and served two terms as president of the Screen Actors Guild. Ed Asner was 91. The perfect opportunity to sort of look through the curtain a little bit. Of you could say there's a lot of buzz around Jason Statham. Deadline reports the actor is signed to star in Miramax's The Beekeeper, described as a thriller steeped in the mythology of beekeeping. Shooting reportedly is planned to begin next fall. We'll do the montage first. John W. Lawson lost both hands in an accident more than 30 years ago. That hasn't stopped him from being an actor and director, as well as a disability inclusion advocate. Now Lawson has landed a major role in Paramount's Pet Cemetery prequel. Lawson and Paramount tell Variety the role originally was not written for an amputee. But after his audition, writer-director Lindsay Beers rewrote the role to suit Lawson. No release date yet for the film. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It's just about 528, 76 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, heavy rain and flooding continue in Louisiana and Mississippi, thanks to Ida. We're going to hear from President Biden on the situation coming up. Lots of kids uh, already headed off to college now or already there, and that means they need to start making good financial decisions. We have some important things to remember to help make that transition a smoother one. And an area church reversed the offering plate this weekend and handed families envelopes of cash. We're going to tell you the reason behind the act of kindness. And ahead on GMSA at 6, our Tejano Moments series continues with a look at one of our own here at KSAT. Don't want to miss her message for young women. This morning, we continue to track Ida as the storm churns through parts of Louisiana and Mississippi. And here at home, uh, not that kind of rain at all. We are at 76 degrees, although we did get some rain this weekend. Uh, downpours here and there. We're going to be checking in with Mike right now. And a good morning to you. It is Monday, August 30th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. And we're looking forward to a pretty warm week, I think. Not too bad, though, overall, when you consider we are wrapping up one month and beginning another that are pretty typically hot. Yeah. You know, once again, we have not uh, for the month of August hit triple digit temperatures. The highest has been 98 and that was uh, what a week, week and a half ago or so. And uh, it, it is going to start off on the hot side, especially compared to normal for September. But still, uh, we are not looking at any triple digit temperatures. So that is a nice little gift. 76 degrees as of right now, two points at 72, which means, yeah, it's the usual morning humidity out there. Not anything steam bath sort of humidity. We did have a few leftover showers around the area yesterday, especially off to the west and then also notice some of this moisture which is coming on in here from off the mountains of Mexico. There is a, a tropical system over there right along the west coast of Mexico which is feeding some of the moisture in here and out in the hill country is the better chance for some rain later on today. You know one or two scattered showers around here but out to the west you've got probably a 40% chance for a shower or thunderstorm about 30 here in town and as far as the allergens mold is very high thanks to all the moisture around here from the rain we've had the past couple of days 88 at noon 94 high temperature wind is going to be out of the northeast we do have this somewhat northerly flow and so that's what's taking some of these disturbances from up there and combining with that moisture and giving that uh, chance of rain especially out there to the west as far as rain chances, today's going to be the best of really the rest of the week. One or two of them here and there, but otherwise just about nil as far as rain chances go. However, temperatures we were talking about are definitely going to be going up to ring in the month of September. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Vavasos. What's going on, sir? Hey, good morning, Mike. Uh, we have had some scattered issues out on the roadways this morning. They've been clearing up pretty quickly here, but let's go ahead and take you here to US 90 in Montgomery. There was construction happening there last week. Looks like it's cleared out. Loop 410 at Marbach shows a pretty good commute so far, but let's go ahead and bring you to the map right now. While it does show a pretty green start to the morning, we have been seeing those issues, but again, they have been cleared now. One of them that just popped up is a stall right here, US 90 eastbound at Zaza Mora. Now, these stalls have been coming up and they've been uh, clearing out right 
rather quickly. So just check those vehicles before you hit the roadways. And if you're going to be traveling to San Antonio from any of these neighboring communities, well, it is still pretty green right now. If you're coming in from Seguin on I-10, we got half an hour for you at this hour. And let's go ahead and take a look at Lavernia on 87, 23 minutes, 28 minutes coming in from 37 in Floridasville. So, you know, it has been a pretty easy start to this Monday morning as we're starting a new week. People can get out and maybe grab that cup of coffee before heading to their destination. But we're watching the roads closely and we'll have more construction to be on the lookout for coming up later this morning on GMSA. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, there was no running away from trouble for one man on the east side. San Antonio police say he was trying to get away from a shooter when he was run over by a truck. Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters with that story. And Katrina, we understand the driver stopped to help, but police are still looking for the shooter. Well, that's right. And it sounds like these were two separate and different strokes of bad luck that hit this man all on the same night. The police found him on the ground at South Utah. I'm sorry, South Pine and Utah after 11 last night. It seems he had injuries from being run over by a pickup as well as a gunshot wound in his chest. That man was in critical condition as he left for a hospital in an ambulance. Police believe that someone shot him at a different location. They say the victim appeared to be running away from that person when he collapsed in the street. Then a driver in a pickup who police say had nothing to do with the shooting came along and ran over that man. The driver told police that he didn't see the man lying on the ground, and uh, but he says he did stop to help. Now, police have not told us much about the victim other than he's in his 30s. And again, they don't know who shot him or why. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. This morning, Ida continues to affect Louisiana with wind, rain, storm surge, and flash flooding. The storm made landfall as a Category 4 hurricane is now weekend, but is still a big danger. Now that storm is moving through neighboring Mississippi and turning deadly. CNN's Daryl Forges reports from Baton Rouge. Oh my gosh, I wish I would have evacuated. I kid you not. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Ida making landfall near Port Fouchon, Louisiana, just shy of a Category 5 storm and with a sustained winds of 150 miles per hour at landfall. Ida, a stronger hurricane than Katrina, which devastated the state 16 years ago Sunday. But when you have Mother Nature throw at you a storm this strong with the surge, the wind, the rain that, that we, we're talking about with Hurricane Ida, there's going to be devastating impacts. The storm slowing down, but increasing the flooding potential. Calls for residents needing help streaming into emergency centers as night falls. The water is rising. Um, people are in their homes and we're getting reports of, of people with water up to their chest. They're asking to be rescued. So mm. very, very dark and we, we just can't get out yet. Louisiana's coastal parishes now pummeled for hours by Ida. Signs of the storm's devastating force felt across the state. Homes and businesses throughout the state without power. New Orleans losing power Sunday night. The only electricity coming from generators. President Joe Biden pledging federal assistance to help get the Gulf region back on its feet. To the people of the Gulf Coast, I want you to know that uh, we're praying for the best and planning uh, prepared for the worst. In Baton Rouge, I'm Daryl Forges. More breaking news out of Kabul in the last few hours. A U.S. official says as many as five rockets were fired at the International Airport. We're told the defense system engaged the rockets and there have been no reports of casualties. This comes one day after the U.S. said an airstrike took out an imminent threat to the airport followed by following the deadly attack at Hamid Karzai International Airport last Thursday. That attack left at least 183 dead, including uh, 13 U.S. military personnel. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki says that President Biden has been briefed on the latest rocket attack and was informed that, quote, operations continue uninterrupted at HKIA for the airport. The official deadline to withdraw is tomorrow. The U.N. Atomic Agency says North Korea appears to have restarted the operation of its main nuclear reactor used to produce weapon fuels. The annual report comes as North Korea has openly threatened to enlarge its nuclear arsenal amid long dormant nuclear di diplomacy with the United States. The report refers to a five megawatt reactor at the North's main nuclear complex. The reactor produces plutonium, one of the two key ingredients to build nuclear weapons, along with highly enriched uranium. In California, the Caldor Fire has now been burning east of Sacramento for more than two weeks. Authorities say the firefighters on the line are experiencing the highest temperatures so far this season. 
as well as some of the lowest humidities, which are down to just 8%. Firefighters doing their best to try to keep the fire off major highways and clear lower level vegetation to try to reduce the fire spread. Here at home, we're now 17 months into this pandemic and still the image of long lines at the San Antonio Food Bank makes a distribution ingrained in our minds. This weekend leading SA, we learned about the need in the community. Max Massey has the details. Yes, President and CEO of the San Antonio Food Bank, Eric Cooper, joined us live. We talked about a lot. We talked about the consistent need here in and around San Antonio. We talked about other programs, including dipping into affordable housing for people in our region. And of course, in anticipation of Hurricane Ida, we talked about how they are stepping up and helping out. Take a listen. The food bank's known for fighting that daily disaster of poverty, but when a natural disaster steps up, uh, we step up to that too. And so, um, you know, whether man-made or, or mother nature, uh, we work with a network of food banks throughout the United States called Feeding America. And our sister food bank there in New Orleans is gonna need a lot of support. And so we will serve as a donation uh, destination, a, a staging area for food that would be shipped into the Gulf Coast. You can watch our complete interview with Eric Cooper right now. Just head to KSAT.com. We have leading us a special segment every Sunday in our 8 a.m. hour. If you ever have someone that you want to hear from, just respond to myself or Sarah Acosta. We'll see you all next Sunday. Guys, back to you. And time now, it's 539. It's about 76 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, important details on a meat recall that you need to know about. Also next, a local church giving back to its congregation hopes of making a difference. And outside with live cam on your early, early Monday morning, looking back towards downtown. You're watching GMSA on a Monday, and we'll be right back. 542, welcome back to GMSA. A far northwest side church decided to reverse the offering plate on Sunday and handed families envelopes of cash. Oak Hills Church says it handed out 762 envelopes in all, each with a $100 bill. And for any families who were struggling, the lead minister told them the money was theirs. For those who weren't, he told them to pay it forward. The church's adult ministries pastor said the coolest moment wasn't when families opened the envelopes, but rather when they realized the challenge of how to put that money to use. We're excited to see how uh, stories flood back in of how uh, each person uh, goes into the places where they live, work, learn and play and get to use that money uh, for the benefit of others. The church also said they had dozens more envelopes they would have to give out next week since more people had attended than they'd expected. Sweet story. Yeah, it is. 543, about 76 degrees. And going to college can be rewarding, but also costly if you are too careless with your finances. Up next, what new college students need to remember in order to avoid a whole lot of debt down the road. 546, a new class of freshmen are now off to college, and for many, it's the first time they'll have to take control of their personal finances. Max Massey has some things students should always remember. Financial website Money Under 30 put together a few suggestions to help make the transition to college a smooth one. First up, become financially literate. That means spending time reading or listening to podcasts about personal finance. The more you know about money and the more you know how to manage it, the better. Also, avoid credit card, car loan, and student loan debt if possible. If student loans are necessary, make sure you're getting the one that best fits your need. Compare everything from interest rates to repayment terms and make sure any student loans are used for appropriate expenses like tuition not personal purchases like clothes. If you do have a credit card, use it responsibly. Pay off the balance in full each month, which will help you build your credit. And if you're shopping for a credit card, check ones designed specially for college students. Chase, Discover, and Bank of America are among those offering special cards. If possible, work, a job, or even two jobs can help you graduate without taking on additional debt for those living expenses. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. In your morning consumer headlines, just like a lot of offices, gyms around the country are going all in or hybrid in order to keep sales up. The Wall Street Journal says gyms are sticking with the popular model that grew out of the pandemic. Many are now offering classes for customers both live and via video conferencing. With many still working from home, health officials say it is now important, more important than ever, to stay in shape. 
The USDA is warning consumers of a recall of 862,000 pounds of Italian antipasto because of salmonella contamination. Vitelli Beretta says the recall includes its 24-ounce trays of uncured Italian-style meats sold at Costco. The CDC has connected the company's charcuterie assortments to a salmonella outbreak with cases in 17 states. Well, there have been no fatalities. The CD has reported 36 illnesses and 12 hospitalizations between May and late July. People who have purchased the product can return it to their local Costco or call the company's hotline. And earlier I was looking at TransGuy. It looks like there's a lot of flashing lights out there at I-35 in O'Connor. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. What's the scoop, Stephen? Yeah, we do have a crash reported here off 35 at O'Connor. You can see how those flashing lights are indicating that there is a possible, or there is a closure out there as first responders are working to clear the scene. And you can see traffic there slowing down for those first responders, which is a good sign. We're trying to make out exactly what's happening out there. So, uh, but as you can see from this shot at TransGuy, we do have multiple crews out there. And we're going to be watching that pretty closely, but taking a look look at the map. It's not even 6 a.m. yet, but we're already starting to see those northbound lanes of 35 affected near Oak at O'Connor Road. Traffic right now, as you just saw, is moving at 14 miles per hour, so take it slow out there. Uh, we will see how this is going to be impacting that morning drive, but it looks like we're already starting to see those delays. Uh, stall looks like it's just cleared out here off US 90 eastbound. Just checking the shots at TransGuide there at Zazamoto, but a few more are popping up that we're going to be watching pretty closely right now, but the main thing is going to be this crash here off 35. Right now, this is a big one right now on the roadway. So if you're traveling through that area, of course, move over and slow down for those first responders who are working to keep, keep the road safe for everybody. Uh, but it looks like this is going to be an issue for anyone that's going to be heading out the door in the next few moments, guys. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'm sure it will starting to build up right yeah. already. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, I was looking at the clouds there. I got a lot of cloud cover this weekend, I guess, because all the rain. That's a nice shot, though. Beautiful. Yeah, some folks, I mean, saw a lot of sunshine. Others were seeing rain yesterday morning. I was out running some errands and there was one shower over there by the airport and you look on radar and it was this little tiny little spot and that's how isolated a lot of these showers were yesterday and even the, the previous days. But then if you were under that shower, it was coming down pretty good and that's going to be the case as well. Primarily, if you had to kind of point to one direction on the map or the other, it would be toward the hill country later on today. Fairly tranquil start right now. Everything is uh, pretty dry and once again, zero so far. I don't know if we're jinxing things by talking about this. The hottest has been 98 degrees so far. That's compared to last year. We had 36 100 degree days. Again, this is a the official reading out there at the airport, the hottest was 107 in the middle of July. So it's a nice graphic. Let's hope it holds true the rest of our uh, heating days. 95 yesterday, which was about the uh, average temperature. Um, only one triple digit was reported now on this map. Now, of course, in your backyard may have been up to triple digits. And then today, roughly the, the same situation. We're going to be in metropolitan area, low to mid 90s. And again, very dependent upon Cloud cover, clouds hang out a little bit more. Temperatures obviously stay down, but it doesn't take much. Even though we're still in the, the downward slide of the, the warmest average temperatures, you get a, some sunshine out there and it heats things up fairly quickly. We will have heat index readings about uh, four or five degrees above the actual air temperatures. So we are looking at still low hundreds, especially to the south and southeast and getting up close to 105. Computer model through the afternoon does have, again, some scattered showers and thunderstorms, probably a better chance off to the west and to the uh, northwest and that's going to be the case through early evening hours sun goes down most of those will be dying off and then tomorrow yeah one or two more of them out there it's pretty much going to be about it you can't completely discount a stray shower to even going in toward Wednesday maybe Thursday but the rain chances are not all that great so there is Ida. It is now a tropical storm. It's going to continue to work its way, be a huge rain producer, uh, Mid-South, Tennessee Valley, Ohio Valley, up to the Northeast. And this area of high pressure is going to try to build back in here to help heat us up. And that's why temperatures are going to be definitely on the above normal side as we start off the month of September. But this thing's not going to be sitting right smack on top of us. So we still will get this flow coming in here off the Gulf of Mexico. So that's still going to allow a couple of showers or or two to uh, pop up, especially along the, the coastal plain with the sea breeze. 88 degrees today at noon, couple of showers, couple of thunderstorms are going to try to start developing and then 94 high temperature and again a few scattered showers and thunderstorms around the area. The next few days, yeah, one or two of them out there. 
if that. I mean, it's just about nil as far as rain chances, but temperatures will definitely be on the warm side, mid and leaning toward upper 90s, and then a couple more thunderstorms are possible this weekend. But warm start to September. Yes. But no triple digits. Right. Triple digits. <laughs> we're, we're lucky. Do we, do we cheer yet? Um, no, not yet. Next week. <laughs> Maybe next week. we can think about ordering the banners to celebrate at some point. Uh -huh. But then think back 2005, third week of September, I think mm -hmm. it was like 105 all week long. Oh, wow. Okay. Not saying that'll repeat, but I'm just saying it can happen. In so. Why don't we talk about this again in a month? Yeah. Can we do that? We'll How about those cowboys? <laughs> <laughs> Mike. We'll find out Thursday night. <laughs> yeah. 553, about 76 degrees. And let's like look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, seven, four, four, fireball five, daily four, six, one, nine, nine, fireball zero. Cash five number six, 13, 21, 29, 32, lotto, Texas, one, nine, 25, 30, 39, 41, and powerball 12, 22, 26, 46, 59, powerball 26, power play two. Good luck. On Wednesday, we'll be hosting a KSAT Community Town Hall discussing food insecurity in Bear County. Max Massey and Sarah Costa will be joined by the CEO of the San Antonio Food Bank, Eric Cooper, and experts on nutrition and health. If you have any questions for our panelists, you can submit them right now on KSAT.com. Again, our Feeding Tomorrow Town Hall will be Wednesday at 2 p.m. Look for that. Head in our next hour of GMSA this morning, a man's in the hospital after he was shot and run over by a truck on the east side. We'll have the details. Clean up underway after an early morning house fire on the city's northeast side. We'll tell you if anyone was hurt. And we're staying on top of what is now Tropical Storm Ida. Hundreds of thousands without power after the storm tore through Louisiana and Mississippi. We'll talk to Mike about your forecast and then we'll check in with Stephen Cavazos to get an update on this situation involving first responders at I-35 and O'Connor. We'll be back. This morning, Tropical Storm Ida tearing through the south, leaving hundreds of thousands without power. We'll have the very latest. And here at home, taking a look outside with live cam. No rain in uh, this shot. Uh, not really expecting a whole lot this week. In fact, things are going to heat up. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. Hope you had a great weekend. Thanks for starting your work week with us. It is Monday, August 30th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, I hope you had a great weekend. Hope you had a chance to enjoy the rain because it's going to warm up again. They told us it would be very hit or miss showers or storms that those that got rain this weekend. It was quite the tropical downpour, wasn't it, Mike? Yeah, I mean, they are come down in buckets at times. I was caught in one Friday afternoon and then a lot of folks are saying like what rain because mm -hmm. didn't get any rain. We do have another chance for it uh, later on today, especially off to in portions of the hill country. Talk more about that. Fairly tranquil start as of right now. 75 uh, here in town since 77 Randolph at 74 degrees. So these temperatures are at or a little bit above their respective normal lows. Mold is very, very high. Thanks to all the rain that we've had around here, 14,000 plus, and that should start to go down as the week progresses. Temperatures will be about to steady throughout the rest of the morning. Wind is out of the northeast. We do have this bit of a, a northerly to uh, northwesterly flow in the atmosphere, a lot in the atmosphere, surface winds out of the northeast, but that's what's bringing down some of these little disturbances around here to give us that chance for a couple of showers and thunderstorms. Again, most of those are gonna be off to the west and to the northwest. High temperature today, right what you uh, pretty much would expect at 94 degrees. And a uh, quick check on what is now tropical storm Ida. 60 mile per hour winds. It did make land on Saturday and it's going to continue to work its way up to the uh, north and to the northeast and be a big old rain producer. But it sure did pack a punch when it made landfall throughout portions of Louisiana. With more on that, Sarah Costa, what do you got? Good morning. Yeah, kind of just people are just picking up the pieces, looking at that damage. Ida, like Mike said, now a tropical storm is likely is likely to be named one of Louisiana's most powerful storms, came crashing into the state on the 16th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. Louisiana braced for intense life-threatening winds, catastrophic flooding, and storm surges. Electricity is expected to be out for weeks to months, 
forecasters expect days of severe weather to hit the Gulf Coast region and other southern states as the storm mo moves through. Now, dramatic new video continues to come in from the area. This was the scene not too long ago in St. Bernard, Louisiana. Here you can see the howling wind and heavy rain and the flooded streets. The parish president there is already warning that recovery will take months, not weeks. Now, the storm, now a major test for the city's hurricane protection system, which was not in place when the levees failed during Hurricane Katrina. This is this is a story, of course, we'll continue to follow throughout our newscast. And you can look for team coverage on Good Morning America beginning at 7. Now let's check with our local roads with traffic authority, Stephen Cavasso. Hey, Stephen. Hey, thank you so much, Sharon. Our thoughts out to everyone in Louisiana this morning. Uh, right now, 35 at O'Connor. We got a mess this hour. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the Trans Guide shot. As you can see here, we do have multiple first responders still out there on the scene. I was just talking to our friends over at Trans Guide, and what we can tell you right now, that little dark mass that you see there uh, appears to be a tractor trailer. It's unclear if this is involved in this crash. It's been reported out there, but multiple lanes appear to be closed from this shot at Trans guide. Let's go ahead and bring you to the map right now and show you how things are shaping up right now with traffic. I-35 northbound at O'Connor. We do see that traffic is moving, but very slowly at seven miles per hour, picking up a little bit further here on 35 with uh, 33 miles per hour. So use caution out there. It's getting really busy right now, guys, because we do have a stall reported here off Loop 410 southbound at Dietrich Road. We have had a few of those stalls that have been showing up on our maps and then clearing out. So check those vehicles before you hit the roadways. And if you're traveling to San Antonio in the next few minutes, Good news here. We do have a lot of green on the screen, which is what we like to see. 28 minutes from 37 a pleasant drive from Pleasanton. If you're coming in from Lytle on 35, it's 16 minutes at this hour. Highway 90 from Castroville is just 19 minutes, so nothing too big there on the roadways. But here at I-35 at O'Connor's where the big issue is right now, you can see we do have some road flares out there indicating those closures. Again, use caution. We're watching this closely. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, one man is fighting for his life after he was shot and run over in the street. This happened last night just after 11 on the city's east side on South Pine Street. That's near I-10. And that's where San Antonio police say the 30-year-old man was running with a gunshot wound before he collapsed in the street. That's when officers say he was run over by a pickup truck. The driver of that truck did stop to help. Katrina Weber is staying on top of the story, and she's going to join us live in our next half hour with the very latest. Right now, you're looking live at Cabo International Airport, where overnight multiple rockets were fired. They were intercepted by a U.S. missile defense system as the race to evacuate Americans and Afghan allies out of Afghanistan enters its final phase. Thirteen American service members were brought back to the U.S. Sunday after they were killed at the airport, trying to ensure safe passage for those attempting to leave. ABC's Andrea Fujii has more from New York. With the deadline to withdraw troops from Afghanistan less than 24 hours away, the State Department, as of Sunday, says 250 U.S. citizens are still in the country. This is the most dangerous time in an already extraordinarily dangerous mission these last couple of days. And so we will do everything possible to keep, uh, to keep people safe, but the risk is very high. Most of the military members remaining in Afghanistan are racing to evacuate Americans and Afghan allies from the airport in Kabul, hoping to escape the Taliban. Their mission turning deadly last Thursday when 13 U.S. service men and women were killed in a suicide bombing, along with dozens of Afghans. In retaliation, the U.S. carried out a drone strike against an ISIS-K planner and facilitator, and an unmanned U.S. drone targeted a vehicle less than five miles from the airport. The vehicle, believed to be carrying a substantial amount of explosive material, which caused powerful subsequent explosions. And overnight, as many as five rockets were fired at the airport. Officials saying the U.S. anti-missile system intercepted at least some of them, and so far there doesn't appear to be any casualties. In the meantime, a solemn scene in Delaware Sunday. U.S. servicemen carrying out the dignified transfer of the 13 service members killed last week. Off to the side, President Biden, the First Lady, and high-ranking cabinet officials. All of those killed were children or even infants in 2001 at the start of the war, including 20-year-old Marine Lance Corporal Riley McCollum. Marine Lance Corporal David Espinoza, Army Staff Sergeant Ryan Noss, Marine Corporal Hunter Lopez, and 23-year-old Marine Sergeant Nicole G. President Biden has now directed the Homeland Security Department to take the lead in resettling those refugees who've been evacuated out of Afghanistan. 
Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. We want to tell you about a couple of pop-up coronavirus vaccine clinics happening later this morning. One's at St. Jude Catholic Church on San Augustine Avenue. It's happening from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. The other is at the Alamo City Barber College on Bandera from 11 a.m. to 6. Both the Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson vaccines will be offered. New this morning on KSET.com, a trust index alert. A recent Facebook post incorrectly claimed city officials forced people into quarantine centers amid the pandemic. The truth is the city's Department of Human Services offers hotel rooms to people who have tested positive for COVID-19, but have no way of safely isolating. But the hotel is not mandatory and people are under no obligation to stay. Most of the hotel rooms are for, the, for those referred from homeless shelters. Guests are asked to stay in their rooms for roughly 10 days. You can read more about this trust index story on our website at kset.com. Time check 608 to about 76 degrees. The Cowboys finish up a rough preseason and looking ahead their schedule does not get any easier. We're going to have a recap and a preview. Our latest episode of KSAT Explains dissects the foster care system and why some say it is so broken. After the break, one woman shares her story from inside that system. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a humid start to your day, but really not too bad at 76 degrees looking for the heat. But you know what? It's not going to be that bad this week. We're going to check in with Mike. And welcome back at 612. Our latest episode of Case It Explains takes a look at what many people say is the broken foster care system in Texas. Hundreds of displaced children have fallen through the cracks. But there are local organizations working to make sure some of those children have a safety net as they age out of the system. RJ Marquez introduces us to a local woman who connected with one of those organizations and has a new outlook on life. Within six months, I was moved four times. For the first time in her life, Robin Parker feels a sense of stability. The first time her family was at the center of a child protective services case, she was just three years old, but she wasn't removed from her family and put into a foster care home until she was a teenager. I was very angry as a teenager, um, and sometimes I took it out on my foster parents. Sometimes I took it out on the, the foster girls that I was roomed with. But many other times, Robin felt like she had to hide her emotions and feelings out of fear of not knowing where she would go next. It was hard because I also had to contain myself. Because if I showed too much emotion or I got too difficult, they could put notice on me and they could send me away. And that was something I didn't want to do. I didn't want to move anymore. While Robin was in the system, her parents were incarcerated and she wasn't close to any other family members. Like many other foster children, every day in the system for Robin felt like a struggle for survival and to find a sense of normalcy. You want to be normal and you can't be normal. And so then you look for ways to rebel and you look for ways to figure out how to process that. We're experiencing a lot of emotions in a very small time at an age where we're not emotionally mature. Robin met Elaine Hartle when she was 17 years old and connected with the Through Project, a nonprofit that supports San Antonio and surrounding area foster youth as they age out of the system. It turned out to be a life changing experience. Elaine asked Robin to mentor foster teens in a similar situation. Robin finished high school, graduated from college, and started working for the Through Project. I didn't quite see myself reaching this point in my life. I, I thought it was going to end in a more negative note. So I'm just, one, I'm grateful to have the opportunities that I have. Robin is now 26 years old, and she's on the move again, this time moving out of state for a new opportunity on her own free will and with her entire future ahead of her. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. You can hear more from Robin and others about the foster care system by watching KSAT Explains, the broken foster care system. It's available to stream right now on demand at KSAT.com slash explains. Still seeing some flashing lights out there, part of I-35, Stephen. And if you take a look there, three lanes are also blocked there, Mark and Seth, which is obviously leading to some big delays for our early morning commuters. Uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look here from the shot at Trans Guide. Uh, multiple lanes are closed right now. It appears three lanes. Uh, and as we mentioned a little bit earlier in the newscast, uh, it does appear that there is a tractor trailer there. Again, it is not clear if that was involved in this crash. But let's go ahead and take a look at the map and see how that's shaping up with traffic. Again, 35 northbound at O'Connor is where that is reported. Traffic moving at five miles per hour, so not 
dropped very fast. This is going to be an issue if it's still out there within the next few moments, already causing those delays, but could lead to bigger delays if we still still see that out there. So use some caution if, for those first responders. We do have a stall still reported out here, Loop 410 southbound at Dietrich Road, and another stall. Let's go ahead and take you right over here to Loop 1604, US 90, pardon me, eastbound at Loop 1604, and jumping up all the way to Leon Valley, we do see a stall here off I-10 westbound at Bernie Stage Road. So it is getting a little bit busier as we start this new work week, but as you can see on the map, what started as a pretty green morning is starting to shape up to be a little bit colorful, which is not necessarily what we like to see as people are going to be heading out the door in the next few moments. A different shot here at 35 at O'Connor, a little bit blurry though, but you can see where those road flares are set up again. Three lanes blocked there in those northbound lanes of 35 right at O'Connor. Traffic is moving, but Mark stuff, it's moving pretty slow, so just use some caution out there. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, I got to watch out for that. Mike, uh, it's going to be a little warm, but you say we haven't hit the... No, we haven't. Hit we don't that, want to say it. We haven't hit that number officially <laughs> uh, so far this year. Does it start with a one and end in a zero? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep, haven't hit the, here in town. Now, you may have hit it in your backyard, especially uh, down to the west and to the southwest along the Rio Grande Valley. But yeah, and the official numbers, not yet. And uh, it's not in the forecast. 75 uh, this morning. Temperatures are close to what the you would expect this time of year. And same thing later on this afternoon, 94 high temperature. And there will be a couple of scattered showers and thunderstorms out there. Wind is out of the northeast, a little unusual this time of year at about um, 10 to 15 miles per hour later on today. All right, here's a picture of again one of those big hefty tropical downpours where most everybody did not see rain, but then there was that huge rain shaft. This is out there in uh, Hondo. And yeah, if you're underneath that rain shaft right there, it was coming down in buckets right now. Fairly tranquil when you step outside so as far as any uh, precipitation, anything like that. We don't have anything showing up on the uh, on radar right now. Temperatures again, what you would expect. It is warm. It is somewhat humid out there. Not ridiculously humid, though. Now we're getting up to 74 for a dew point there at Stinson as well as down around Pleasanton, but elsewhere it's tolerable humidity, if you will, and usual kind of daily cycle that we go through. The dew points are going to be dropping off somewhat later on this afternoon. Still enough humidity, especially down to the southeast to give us those higher heat index readings and it will feel a few degrees warmer than the actual air temperature. And then that humidity, of course, is going to be coming back up as the uh, after or as the morning goes on overnight into the early morning hours. A lot of moisture coming in here from the southwest. Of course, off to the east of us, that's what's left over. What is technically still tropical storm Ida, but there is another tropical system off the uh, west coast of Mexico, and that's what's throwing a lot of moisture in our direction, and that's what's going to help to feed some potential showers and a, a couple of thunderstorms around here. Most of those if you had to kind of point to one direction or the other, the majority or the better chance of rain is going to be further out in parts of the hill country later on today. There will be a few scattered ones here and there. And again, most folks won't see rain. If you do, it's going to be a pretty hefty downpour. And tropics, once again, there is Ida. And there's a couple other spots, one out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and then further off down to the uh, east that the Hurricane Center is watching as of right now. And then also, Going into the future, it's just kind of keeping an eye down here, which isn't that far out, out of reach to keep an eye on the Caribbean. But down there in the Caribbean, maybe something trying to brew in the next about uh, four or five days out there in the tropics. All right, today it is going to be seasonably warm, humid out there, 88 degrees. A couple of showers are going to try to develop already by noon, and then we'll see a few more by later on this afternoon. 94 high temperature. Again, some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Uh, put a about a 30% chance on it as far as uh, rain chances today. A little bit better shot out there at the in the hill country. And then tomorrow, Wednesday, yeah, a couple of showers are possible. Not very likely. Temperatures will definitely start to warm up. We're looking at some mid and even leaning toward upper 90s. And by the weekend, still on the warm side for Labor Day weekend, one or two showers or thunderstorm. If you got weekend plans coming up here, wouldn't change them as of right now. The unofficial end of summer coming up yep. next week. Yes, it Labor is. Day already. And it'll be hot to celebrate. <laughs> yes, indeed. It will feel like summer still. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 619, about 76 degrees. And the new iPhone may be coming with some big changes just to head what it can mean for people in areas with poor cell phone service.
Just ahead on GMS Civic First, Cowboys suffer a 34-14 loss at the hands of the Jacksonville Jaguars in their preseason finale. Yesterday, Dallas finished the preseason winless. Cowboys open the regular season on the road against the defending Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That game is set for Thursday, September 9th. Not this Thursday, but next Thursday. Thanks, Mark. For asthma, there's primatine mist. When symptoms strike, your airways narrow and there's less breathing room. Primatine Mist is clinically shown to open airways quickly. Get the number one FDA-approved over-the-counter asthma inhaler and breathe easy again. I brought in Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein. Those who tried me felt more energy in just two weeks. Uh, Here, I'll take that. Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein, one gram of sugar, and now with two new flavors. In this morning's GMA First Look, Elizabeth Holmes facing justice. We will change our lives and our world. Holmes, once a rising star of Silicon Valley with her Steve Jobs inspired wardrobe and the false promise that her company Theranos would revolutionize healthcare heading to court this week. She stands accused of multi-million dollar fraud. The Department of Justice alleging Elizabeth misled patients, doctors and investors. No one from Theranos ever called me to apologize. That's the least you can do when you mess up so badly. Not okay. Holmes, who recently gave birth to her first child just a month ago, continues to maintain her innocence. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll preview Elizabeth Holmes' legal strategy. Why she's saying that she's a victim. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Now to consumer news and new details on the next iPhone. The iPhone 13 will reportedly feature satellite conductivity, allowing users to make calls or send text in areas without cell coverage. That is according to an Apple analyst. The new iPhones expected out next month. Smartwatch shipments are continuing to soar. They jumped nearly 50% this spring compared to last year. More than 18 million of the devices were shipped in the spring, and that's the hottest sales period since 2018. It's finally out. Kanye West's new album streaming now after repeated delays. The album titled Donda is now on Spotify, Apple Music, and Tidal. The album is named after the rapper's late mom. It has 27 tracks featuring collaborations with Jay-Z, The Weeknd, and others. There's no album cover art, just a black square. And time now is 625 and it's about 76 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, violence continues in Afghanistan. It's dead, no, dead, deadline rather for U.S. troop withdrawal inches closer and closer. We'll have the very latest. And back here at home, San Antonio police are investigating a violent scene as a man running from a shooter gets run over by a truck. Katrina Weber is standing by with the very latest in a live report. And traffic right now, we saw these flashing lights at I-35. Steven Cavazos is here. He's sending out push alerts and updating you live on GMSA after the break. To say one local man had a bad night is a drastic understatement. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police say he not only was shot, but also run over by a truck. I'll tell you more about it. Hurricane Ida devastates the Gulf Coast. I'm TJ Parker in New Orleans. I'll have the latest coming up. And here at home on your early Monday morning, the sun is just now starting to peak over the horizon. And a good morning to you. It is Monday, August 30th. Happy Monday. Thank you for joining us. Hope you had a wonderful weekend and I hope you got some rain and if not, maybe you had some cloud cover to cool things off a little bit. All in all, it worked out. Kept us again below the century mark this weekend, Mike Osterhage. Yeah, temperatures were pretty much held in check. I mean, right about uh, average normal mm -hmm. readings, which right now is 94 degrees this time of year. And uh, by the way, talking about the uh, the sunrise, which occurs uh, roughly about uh, 10 minutes after 7 o'clock, but it's also now setting officially just before 8 o'clock. So yes, the days continue to get shorter, not necessarily 
cooler, and that's going to be the situation this week. 75 right now, uh, dew point 72, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere, and that's yeah, it's it's usual summertime humidity, but it's not anything just ridiculously humid out there. Mold is very, very high, and obviously given the rain that we've had around here, and it's probably going to be on the uh, the higher side when the updated count comes out in uh, anywhere from a half hour to uh, an hour. Warm, humid this morning, and then later on this afternoon, a couple of scattered thunderstorms around the area. If you had to point to one area of the map, it would be out toward the hill country where the better chance of rain is today. Put about a 30, maybe 40% chance on some rain. Rest of the week, plenty of sunshine other than a stray shower along the coastal plain. Just going to be hot and getting somewhat hotter mid and looking at some upper 90s to ring in September. And then the weekend, still going to be on the the hotter side of things and there will be one or two showers or thunderstorms out there. If you have plans, outdoor plans for the long Labor Day weekend, I definitely would not change them, but have plenty of water, shade and sunscreen. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything big going on out there, sir? Yeah, Mike, and drivers can expect some delays here off 35 at O'Connor. You can see we do have some crews out there working to clear a crash. I've been there for about an hour now and you can see right from this shot at Transguide, we do have three lanes that are blocked locked off right now and from what looks like it looks like there's attempts to tow a vehicle out of the area as we've been mentioning that there is a tractor trailer that is also out there but it's still unclear if that has in it is involved in that crash or not again we're working to get some information we do have a crew heading out to the scene but as you can see three lanes are blocked right now which is causing some delays there on 35 northbound at O'Connor you can see traffic moving at six miles per hour picking up by Randolph at 35 northbound with 30 miles per hour but the bigger picture does show that it's continuing to build here off those northbound lanes of 35. So do expect those delays and we do have a few issues out on the roadways that have been picking up and slowing down. So just take it easy out there this morning, but the inbound times uh, look pretty green right now with a little bit of a slowdown off 87 in Laverne with 24 minutes to the downtown San Antonio spot. But right now the big thing is going to be this crash off 35 at O'Connor where we do have three lanes still blocked and traffic moving, but pretty slow. Just take it safe out there, guys. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. It seems trouble found a man who was trying his very best to get away from it. San Antonio police say first he was shot, then he was run over by a truck as he tried to run away. Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters where police are still trying to track down the person who caused at least some of his troubles. Uh, did they have any leads, Katrina? Not as far as I know. In fact, it doesn't even seem like police know exactly where the shooting happened. Well, the victim was lying in the street of South Pine in Utah when police found him after 11 last night. They say that man not only had been run over by a pickup, but also had a gunshot wound in his chest. They believe he was shot at some other location and was running down South Pine when he collapsed. At some point later, a driver came along in a pickup and ran him over. The victim was rushed to a hospital and at last check was in critical condition. The police say that the driver told them he didn't see the man in the middle of the street and he did stop to get help. But again, police are not sure who was behind the shooting or why the shooting happened. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Cleanup underway following an early morning house fire on the northeast side. Happened around 3 this morning at a home in the 200 block of Maybell Drive near I-35. Firefighters said they arrived to heavy smoke, but they were able to put out the flames quickly. While no one was hurt, one woman was checked out on the scene as a precaution. There's no word yet on what sparked the fire or how much damages will cost. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers asking for your help finding the person suspected of robbing a Northside Family Dollar Store. It happened back on August 16th in the 5200 block of Blanco Road, and that's where investigators say the man on your screen walked into that Family Dollar, assaulted an employee, and took off with items from the shelves. If you have any information about this case, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number is on your screen right now, 210-224-STOP. 634, you're looking at a live picture at Kabul International Airport. The clock there winding down for all U.S. troops to withdraw from Afghanistan, but the violence has intensified. This morning, a U.S. official says as many as five rockets were fired at Kabul's airport, but were intercepted by a U.S. missile defense system. There were no reports of anyone killed or injured or even who was responsible for the attack yet. Officials say U.S. airstrikes took out two high-profile ISIS-K targets Friday and Sunday and they're tracking possible threats here in the United States. Current capability to threaten the homeland is not there, but that is a capability that they are seeking. 
The U.S. along with 114 countries released a joint statement saying they expect the Taliban to allow safe travel out of Afghanistan even after the August 31st deadline. And now a live look at New Orleans, a city that's been hit very hard by Hurricane Ida. Right now, thousands of people there surrounding areas without power this morning. And looking at the storm right now, Ida has weakened to a tropical storm, but the flood threat is still a major concern. ABC's TJ Parker has the latest. Hurricane Ida slamming into Louisiana as a Category 4 storm Sunday is one of the strongest to ever hit the state. When you have Mother Nature throw at you a storm this strong with the surge, the wind, the rain that, that we, we're talking about with Hurricane Ida, there's going to be devastating impacts. With sustained winds as strong as 150 miles per hour and storm surge up to 15 feet, the National Weather Service warns parts of southeastern Louisiana could be uninhabitable for weeks. This is a devastating hurricane. It's going to have catastrophic impact. Though Ida is slowly weakening, it continues to wreak havoc as it moves north across the state. Heavy rainfall and top levees now posing flash flooding threats. It's not just a coastal event. This is going to impact people that are in this path of this storm throughout Louisiana, Mississippi, and even as the rain goes east. People need to be aware of what's going on, aware of where their risk is. Widespread power outages adding to the danger. Some of the lines can be restored in short, shorter order and then advising us that maybe it'll be a few days, but it could be a matter of weeks. As officials prepare to assess the scope of the devastation, many worry the situation could be dire for those who stayed behind. The water is rising. Um, people are in their homes and we're getting reports of, of people with water up to their chest. They're asking to be rescued. So mm. very, very dire situation and we, we just can't get out yet. In New Orleans, Isabel Rosales. On the West Coast, the Caldor Fire has now been burning east of Sacramento for more than two weeks. Firefighters are doing their best to try to keep the fire off major highways and clear lower level vegetation to try to reduce the spread. More evacuation orders are in place as the fire moves towards populated areas. Back here at home, jaw dropping video of a train crashing into a truck carrying one of those giant wind turbine blades. Just an hour east of San Antonio is one of our top trending stories right now on KSAT.com. Also, a local church gives out $100 bills to its members during a service yesterday. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with these trending stories. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Good morning. Have you ever been dr driving on the highway and you drive past one of those trucks carrying one of those giant wind turbine blades and up close, you're just like, oh my gosh, these are so big. Massive. And that's what makes this video so incredible to watch. And just a warning, this video may be disturbing for some. It was shared on social media by Caleb Brandon. In it, you see a semi-truck hauling a wind turbine blade. The driver told police that he was two-thirds of the way across the railroad tracks when a Union Pacific train came crashing into it before the train signal arms came down. The crash happened around 2.30 yesterday near the intersection of Highway 90 in U.S. 183 in Luling. Officials say the truck carrying a wind turbine was trying to turn onto the highway while a train was approaching. The truck then overturned. Police say there was also some damage to the train in railroad crossing. Thankfully, no injuries were reported. Emergency crews were able to get everything cleared just before 10 last night. Here's a feel good story. A far northwest side church flipped the offering plate on Sunday and handed families envelopes of cash. Oak Hills Church says it handed out 762 envelopes in all, each with a $100 bill inside. For any families who were struggling, the lead minister told them to hang on to it. For families who are not, he asked them to pay it forward. We're excited to see how uh, stories flood back in of how uh, each person uh, goes into the places where they live, work, learn and play and get to use that money uh, for the benefit of others. The church also says they had dozens more envelopes they would have to give out next week since more people had attended than they expected. And of course, you can read about all these trending stories right now on KSAT.com. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. We are now 17 long months into this pandemic. It's still the image of long lines at the food bank sticks out in our minds. This weekend on Leading SA, we learned more about the need for food donations in our community. Max Massey has the details.
Yes, President and CEO of the San Antonio Food Bank, Eric Cooper, joined us live. We talked about a lot. We talked about the consistent need here in and around San Antonio. We talked about other programs, including dipping into affordable housing for people in our region. And of course, in anticipation of Hurricane Ida, we talked about how they are stepping up and helping out. Take a listen. The food bank's known for fighting that daily disaster of poverty, but when a natural disaster steps up, uh, we step up to that too. And so, um, you know, whether man-made or, or mother nature, uh, we work with a network of food banks throughout the United States called Feeding America. And our sister food bank there in New Orleans is going to meet a lot of support. And so we will serve as a donation uh, destination, a, a staging area for food that would be shipped into the Gulf Coast. You can watch our complete interview with Eric Cooper right now. Just head to KSAT.com. We have leading us a special segment every Sunday in our 8 a.m. hour. If you ever have someone that you want to hear from, just respond to myself or Sarah Acosta. We'll see you all next Sunday. Guys, back to you. 641, about 76 degrees. And after the break, our Tejano Moment series continues with a look at one of our own here at KSET. She's a groundbreaking reporter, and you don't want to miss her message to all the young journalists. And welcome back at 644. She is not only a Latina role model, she's also someone you have seen for years right here on KSAT 12. We're talking about one of our veteran reporters, Jesse Degollado. Jesse is the focus of this week's Tejano Moment series. GMSA producer Rosalind Jimenez has her story. Curiosity and my love for the written word combined to become my desire to be a reporter. A familiar face and role model for Latinas here in South Texas. Born and raised in Laredo, KSAT's own Jessie de Goyado says being a reporter was a dream she had ever since she was a little girl. My mother, in fact, told me, ay, mijita, you're gonna starve. You're gonna starve, my little girl. You're gonna starve. Well, I told her, mom, I don't think so, but you'll see, you'll see. Jessie is a pioneer when it comes to Latinas pursuing a career in journalism. She first started her journey back in 1977 in the Valley, and eventually she made her way to KSAT in 1984. And she's been here ever since, covering countless stories. In Piedras Negras, in Uvalde County, in Monterrey, from the Davis Mountains in far west Texas, at the presidential residence, Los Pinos in Mexico City, well, at the papal site near Denver. And that work has not gone unnoticed. Jesse has received several prestigious awards. They include the Henry Guerra Lifetime Achievement Award from the San Antonio Association of Hispanic Journalists, Journalist, the International Humanitarian Service Award from Mujeres Hispanas por Mejor Justicia, and she was also inducted into the San Antonio Women's Hall of Fame. I was just the girl from Laredo, Texas that made it in the Valley and was blessed to come to San Antonio, and I've been here as long as I have. And so for that, I am proud. Jessie's journey isn't over yet either. She'll continue telling stories that matter to you most, impacting the people right here in San Antonio and inspiring more young Latinas to follow in her footsteps. Rosalind Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. And tomorrow on GMSA, Jesse will tell us what it was like for her when she first started reporting and the advice she has for young women wanting to start a career in journalism. Oh, we love her dearly. Yes. And for now, let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. I was looking at the roadways, uh, still problems there. Yeah, you know, and we'll give you a different shot here at 604 at Bandera. You can see it is pretty busy right now. Let's go ahead and jump to Transguide here, show you that it is shaping up to be, again, one of those busy Monday mornings. We do have a lot of things to talk about here. Uh, this is possibly because of some construction that's happening off 1604 eastbound near La Contera. So just use some caution out there. But the big thing is we want to bring you to this crash here that we've been talking about all morning long. 35 at O'Connor, where three lanes still remain blocked out there. Uh, now, again, that crash looks like it is slowly clearing out, but traffic is still going to be an issue at this hour. Right now we can see that it is moving at six miles per hour in those northbound lanes of 35 right at O'Connor and seeing a little bit of a slowdown there and the southbound lanes as well. So we'll check out check that out and find out if that's going to be impacting that drive time. But it looks like it is from this shot right now from the maps. Traffic is really slow or backing up there because of that crash. So three lanes are still blocked out there. Uh, but overall around town the loop 1604 410. We're not seeing any other big delays. The big thing is going to be this crash here again off 35 at O'Connor where three lanes are blocked. Again, traffic moving, but pretty slow. Just take it easy and move over and slow down for those first responders, guys.
Thank the you, Stephen. Yeah. One more comment on Jesse. The nicest person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He is. Just as sweet as can be. Well, that's what I love about almost all the folks who we were. Well, yeah. They're exactly the same in well, person he, as they are that you see on there at TV. home. On TV. Yeah. But we miss them too because I know. You know we're yeah. working remotely and everything. I haven't seen Jesse in the newsroom in a month of Sundays. Since it seems like been a while. Yeah. All retired. Since all retired. Yeah. Yeah. She was here for that. She was here for that. So, anyway. All right. Here's what. I love. Oh, this is just a great picture. I love it. It looks so tranquil. And no mosquitoes. I don't. Why do I think mosquitoes in that picture? <laughs> maybe uh, the little lights. <laughs> at maybe. The bottom. maybe. I don't uh, know. The, so. Is there? Which? Did I see water? Maybe. Which? Yeah. Reminds me. If you did get some rain over the weekend, make sure you uh, just look around. Any, you know, the little pots underneath or the the bowls underneath the uh, planters, anything like that. Any standing water. Get rid of that so we don't have any mosquitoes. Nice start this morning. A little bit of uh, haze. Some clouds off to the east, and uh, we did have as this loops back on through a couple of leftover showers and thunderstorms late late uh, yesterday, and nothing is showing up as of right now. But we will see a few more later on today. All right, so uh, Ida is a tropical storm, is 60 mile per hour winds right now. It made landfall 150 mile per hour winds, and it was a lot stronger than Katrina 16 years ago, but it was much more compact. Obviously, it has done a lot of damage, and it's going to continue to work its way up to the north, and it will continue to be a big, big rain producer. So just throughout the rest of the week, it's going to be affecting again the Mid-South, Tennessee, Ohio Valleys, and then going up into the uh, New England states, even forecast to dump a lot of rain around uh, New York, uh, up in toward D.C., Boston area. So if you got any uh, plans going up that direction, you definitely want to uh, check ahead with with that for us. Now this is that computer model that kind of broad brushes things, but there will be a few showers and thunderstorms around the area. The best chance to see rain is going to be out in portions of the hill country. Um, and again, we're only talking 30 40% chance of rain today. And if you had to point to one direction in the map, it'd be off to the northwest today. One or two possibly tomorrow. Same thing Wednesday and Thursday. Rain chances, you can't completely rule it out, but they're almost nil going into the rest of the week and things will definitely heat up and then a couple of them a couple of more of them uh, coming in here toward the weekend but again if you have outdoor plans for the weekend long Labor Day weekend wouldn't change at all right now 88 degrees today at noon a couple of showers a couple of thunderstorms are going to try and develop especially out to the uh, west and northwest and a few more later on this afternoon 94 high temperature today which is the average the normal high temperature tomorrow Again, a shower or two and uh, possible then temperatures will be actually maybe a little bit uh, warmer than that perhaps tomorrow and obviously dependent upon cloud cover, but we're going to be in the mid to upper 90s throughout the rest of the week. So it is going to be a hot start to September and Labor Day weekend is definitely going to be on the hot side around here. What I'm looking forward to in the next month or so is Mike start talking about those cold fronts making their way into the northern tier of the country as we start to see the slow changeover to fall. Usually it's October around here, but in the past couple of years we've had some, I remember we had a cold front a couple of years ago that came through in July, but uh, <laughs> right? even the past couple of years that. we had you know, September yeah. and that little, little signs. Yeah. Maybe not the one that has a good smell to it, but you know, Just you get those nice. Anything features, so. will be nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 651 about 76 degrees. And important news if you own a home tomorrow on GMSA, what you need to know before you refinance and some things you can do that could make a big difference. Outside with live cam, we're going to check back in with Steve and get a traffic update after this. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. And boy, it has been a Monday on the roads here at 35 at O'Connor. You can see flashing lights out there shows that we do have first responders working to clear a crashing that's been out there for a little while now. And we're watching it very closely. You can see from this shot at Transguy three lane still remain blocked out there. Looks like it's getting cleared out. But as we take a look at the map here, it does show traffic moving at four miles per hour. And as we take a look at as we continue to zoom out, it is uh, showing some big delays there on 35 northbound. As you can see here on the loop 1604, also seeing a slowdown there as well but we're watching the roads very closely right now. Inbound times are good, Mike, right now. Thanks, sir. Beautiful start. Grab some sunglasses this morning. And uh, as you can see, we've got some clear skies out there right now. Temperature stands at 75 degrees. The usual humidity that you would expect. 88 at noon, 94 for high temperature. A couple of scattered showers and thunderstorms. Most of those are the better chance is going to be out in the hill country. And then the rest of the week, it's going to be on the hot side as we ring in September. All right, an update on Ida and the situation in Afghanistan coming up next on Good Morning America.
Have a great day, and we'll see you back here at 9. Bye, guys.